Next um, uh, thing is prognos. Can we see the next image, please? So here uh, we see the cufflinks of the Duke of Windsor. I had the privilege in 1987, before most of you were born, uh, to be involved in, in organizing the uh, auction in Geneva of the Duchess of Windsor. So provenance, the less important the item is, the more the multiplying factor uh, due to provenance goes up. So the cufflinks, I don't know what the actual value would be if it was not the Duke of Windsor, but since it was the Duke of Windsor, the multiplying factor was something like uh, 20,000 uh, times the value it would be worth without it. Next image. Oh, the next image I cannot show you, but <laughs> it's, it somehow went missing, um, which was a diamond from the Duke of uh, Duchess of Windsor, okay. which was worth three times the value because there it was already quite uh, expensive. So now after provenance, we have transparency. We want as a purchaser to know exactly what the situation is. So next image, you see the catalogue raisonné of Picasso. Picasso was prolific, as I've said, but you have the catalogue raisonné. These are all the volumes in which m every single work that Picasso has ever done is illustrated repertoried. So this gives you confidence. If you don't know how many works an artist has done, you are a little dubious. When you can see and check exactly, like Gerhard Richter, he has the best catalogue raisonné online and uh, the most precise uh, catalogue raisonné, that uh, gives confidence and that helps the market. Next slide, please. Documentation, signature. You do want documentation, of course, not too much, because if somebody comes with a huge fat dossier, a really true great work does not need a big fat dossier. Still, you do need documentation, signature. Can we see next image? Um, no, the next image. Here you are. These are the various ways in which Picasso signed during his life. And you see how the signature evolved. But he would only sign a work when he would leave his studio. So the works by Picasso that are not signed are the works that stayed with him up to the moment that he passed away. Next slide, please. Local or global market? Uh, obviously, it's much better to be uh, have a global market. Let's see the next image. I am Swiss, so I will use uh, Swiss examples. Giacometti, and I'm very happy to mention Giacometti in Monaco because the best exhibition ever will take place <laughs> devoted to Giacometti at the Forum Grimaldi, yep. and I can't wait for it to... This coming July. Uh, this coming mm -hmm. July. And uh, this is a sculpture that did a world record, I think, I, I, now I, I don't have my notes, but something, you know, around $120 million, a, a very decent price. And there are several works by Giacometti that have sold in, in excess of $100 million. Now, next slide is a landscape by a fabulous artist called Hodler. He's Swiss and he studied with Klimt in Chile in Vienna. Uh, the only problem is 98% of all his works are in Switzerland. Switzerland is a small market, so the world record, this is a world record, is $10 million. But he will never be able to compete with uh, Giacometti. Next slide is legislation. Legislation changes everywhere and uh, uh, in countries like America you are encouraged to donate to public institutions. Most uh, public collections are really built by donations and uh, people who donate have a great, great advantage of being able to then uh, deduct uh, from their uh, uh, taxes. Now this uh, painting here by Goya is one of Goya's greatest masterpieces. It's in a uh, it was in a private collection in Parma. Sadly, for the owner, he's no longer amongst us, this work was declared a national heritage in Italy, and therefore he could not sell it at an international price. He could only sell it at a local price. So you can have the greatest masterpiece if you cannot move it. Well, that has a bad influence on the price you will get for it. Next slide is taxation. I already touched on taxation uh, before with the American system. 